Cheers, everybody. We are back for another edition of Bourbon on a Budget. It's TJ Pittenger, Ben Cock, and Brendan Sinone. And myself. And we have another Self My episode um, for you guys tonight that we're very excited about. Hey, before we get jumping into it, if you could go find us on all of the social medias, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, uh, hit us up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, everything that you can find. Bourbon on a budget. We appreciate interacting, and we like when people follow us. Hey, I think we're like less than twenty followers away from a thousand on on Twitter. So. Come on, make it happen. Let's hopefully go. By the time, Let's hopefully go. by the time that this drops, we will be there. So, anyway, hey, what are we doing today? We are. Remember? Do you guys remember? I'm and I'm asking the listeners. I'm asking you too. Do you guys yes. remember when we built out our? Um, <laughs> we built out our starter packs. We took a hundred dollars and bought four bourbons or yeah. rice, whiskeys, whatever, no scotches, um, built out our starter packs and, and I built the best starter pack. And then, uh, Ben's was the worst You're misremembering it, but yes. Uh, Brendan actually won. I finished second with one vote and Ben lost. So thank you, Brendan, for making me not last. Um, I also had someone slide in my DMs and say it wasn't even close, fellas. So you guys better bring it for this one. Was that your wife? He's slid in your DMs count. to tell me that I won. That's what it was. Sorry, Brendan. Ben's was way better than anyone. <laughs> be a very cruel thing to do to me emotionally. That's how, that's how it happens on Twitter. So today we are building another pack. We'll get into that in just a moment. Then we're continuing our King of the Hill Rye series. And then lastly, we are getting into some pursuits and purchases We'll preview what we are reviewing on Thursday, and then we will get out of here. We're hoping that this um, is a little bit less of a train wreck than the uh, last episode. Also, before we go, I want to say a massive apology to Joe, who gave us the decadence uh, last week, the Widow Jane decadence that we reviewed. If you didn't listen to that, um, go Mm -hmm. pause this, stop this, go listen to the Widow Jane decadence review. Uh, We basically crapped all over it, and – we're very sorry, Joe. We appreciate your free bourbon that you gave us. We didn't love the value of that bottle, and Ben was – it was mostly Ben. So we – apolog- mm. we as a, as a company, we apologize for Ben's actions. Yeah, Ben. And so um, we will never do that again, and we're very sorry. Yeah, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> so, so, so Joe, out of the goodness of his heart, gave TJ and I four samples and a Glen Karen each, knowing that we were going to be in the same hotel – for a work-related event, I was going to say, say, please not, clarify not the, same, this. not the same, not the same room. I mean, do. Uh, but you know what? Also, Joe, it's your fault. You shouldn't have texted TJ and I saying that Decadence by Widow Jane is one of the best bourbons you've ever had. And best bourbons to- he's ever had. Yeah, so he said. He said it was an amazing bourbon. I love you, Joe. Totally You're, my, You're worth, my favorite. He said it was totally worth eighty dollars. You'd even pay five hundred for it. That's what he said. Oh my god. <laughs> Joe sends me a lot of bourbon. I feel like that just got cut. That spigot just got shut off. So uh thanks a lot, Brendan. Um, all right, let's jump into this. Joe, we love you. Send better bourbon next time. Um <laughs> be tech right. above, please. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. If it's not stag, I don't want it. Um we are building a better pack than we did the last time. Brendan, do you want to talk about this pack that we're building tonight do before I. we jump into it? All right. So we, I think we're still working on the name of it, uh, but basically the concept, and if you guys think of one midway through this, if you get a little buzzed and, and want to throw the name of what we're calling it, but I'm saying that it's the ideal bourbon collection for the intermediate whiskey fans. Working title. Um any suggestions, guys, to make that better? Or... What's an yeah? What's an intermediate whiskey fan as opposed to like a? Uh, I mean, are we are we intermediate whiskey no, fans? I think we're probably above average at this point. Uh, mm, I think once yeah. you, I think I've once never thought of myself as above average. Below average is what I heard yeah. uh, from that hotel trip. I learned a lot. Uh, 20, hey, uh, Twenty plus bottles in your collection, and you have a bourbon podcast. I think there's like some level of like above averageness, right? We've arrived. But, uh, but so basically, I mean, beginners, right? We're saying that what the starter pack was for beginners was people who are still kind of learning their way through bourbon. Maybe you're interested in it, have had old fashions, have had on the rocks, but are looking to start going neat, uh, still dealing with proof and still learning how to pick up flavors. That's beginner. Intermediate means you're able to get flavors. Now at this point, you're starting to play around with proof. You can get into the hundreds. You're probably okay. And you want to start spending some money, like some real money on, on bourbon money. or whiskey. Scott. Yeah. That's what intermediate is in my mind. Um, so anyways, 
what we're going to do for following up with the bourbon starter pack is we all have two hundred and fifty dollars. So a ex- I don't know why my voice said that two hundred two hundred fifty dollars. I love you. I love you, man. It's like the guy yeah. in the, the, yeah. the spotters. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's what I just did. We get two hundred and fifty dollars to spend on four to five bourbons, and uh, for those of us who graduate the beginner level, want to expand their collection. Uh, we're all going to take a turn and say what we're working with in this collection for 250 doll hairs. And then uh, we will say who wins. So I think the only fair way to do this is for, I think the advantage here is to go last, right? And, and so the disadvantage is to go first because you have to sell before anybody hears you. Uh, my recommendation, and we'll see if it gets voted down or what, but my recommendation would be for Ben to go first because he got zero votes last time myself to go second because I got one vote and for Brendan to go last because he won. All in favor, say aye. Aye. That's fine. All right. Very good. The, the eyes have it. Ben, start us off with your $250 pack of whiskey. Guys, you just wait. So we're going to do four bottles. Quattro bottolitos. 250 bucks. First one, we're going to start with an old favorite of mine. An old King of the Hill favorite, you could say, with an old Forster 1920. Ooh. Right? Come on. That's a great I mean, bottle. It's a banger. Oh, it's a banger. Banger and a half. Uh, $60. How great is that, right? Number a dose. Another one, widely available, can easily find. Just as much of a banger, but also can bang... 1920 off the hill. How about a wild turkey rare breed for $45? 116 proof. Majestic Eagle, it is. Oh my gosh. Then uh can I just should I wait to till the end of yours for objections or can we wait, have those wait, wired? Wait till, wait till no. the end. Wait till yeah. the end. Here's rationale that we could uh complete. Well, I was gonna talk about price objections. Should I jump in with those? Oh uh, yeah, I think it's no. price. No, 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 no. no. 40, 45? Is that not a fifty dollar bottle? No, it's forty five ish. No, it's forty five. Yeah. Okay, on ABC today it was listed at forty nine ninety nine. So I don't know. Well, sorry. So okay, overpay whatever. I, I will I will say I will give forty five to Ben. I think that's Thank reasonable. You. Thank okay. you. I think it's close um, to most places. How that. about this one then? We're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna give you a little specialty local action. Maybe a little bit of wheat. You know, uh, how about any maker store pick that you can find? Stave profile. Don't even worry about the FAE dash one one zero six nine. None of that crap. Right. You want a store pick. They'll usually name their bottles, you know, sweet dipped churro or honey suckle do <laughs> whatever. I don't know. You're very sensual. All I'm saying is you got to pick up a maker store pick. Those are $70, but they're going to be great. And they're going to be at decent proofs. Okay. So any maker's store pick, doesn't matter if you're in Delaware or Denver, Tampa or Tacoma. How about that? What Buy was one. We, what was the price we had for it? 70 bucks. All 69 right. and 99. Then we're going to go a little off the beaten path for your special grab. One that you don't pour out that often. You leave in your bar only for special friends. And this is actually going to surprise a lot of you guys because I am not a finished Ooh. bourbon person. But we're going to go with a recent show up. That blew me away. Hashtag Brendan. Hashtag Barrel Seagrass. Oh, 80 bones. Wow. I think that is a triple finished special bottle that uh, you need to buy. Special occasion. Seagrass was amazing. And I will say this for you, Ben. If someone's not really into rye, like if they're starting to dip, dip their toes into it, it's not super, like all the finishing kind of smells that rye out a little bit. Yes, definitely. Peach, apricot, fruity notes. Uh, it's really, really good. I'm actively looking for someone else to buy me a bottle. What do we get for the price total for Ben? I got two fifty five, but my math could be off. Did you go over I did, Ben? I did yeah. too. That no, sounds about right. All right, so Ben cheated. So that means we get five dollars <laughs> to ours somehow. I don't know. Two fifty a piece. Yes. 
TJ's yeah, livid because he's been trying to work his down for like three hours and for Ben to only go up over. Well, and I'll tell you this. I have his wild turkey rare breed bourbon at 50. Now I'm fine giving him 45 there, but right. as long as we hold that measure across the board. Um, okay. What do we like? What do we not like about um, yes. Ben's? All right. Let me tell you what I like about it first. Um, they're and all I say, Yes, I agree. Love the seagrass. Love the seagrass. I think it's the perfect rye for people that are that are trying to get into rye because it's so um, it's finished so much it doesn't quite taste like rye. So it's like kind of an easy entry into it. Love that. Uh, that was a fantastic pour that that Brendan gave us. Uh, cannot wait to get back up to Tallahassee and drink more of his um, barrel seagrass. We'll see you soon, Brendan. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, we'll see you in a few weeks. Uh, just about a month from now. So love that. Um, I love. Okay. The next two are love and hate mm. um, at the same time. I've got pros and cons for what you did past that. I love the maker's stave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also, I, I wouldn't say hate it. There's just some some uncertainty about it. I would say most of the maker's staves I've had have been very good. Some have been like, okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. You could run into a bad one. Like it's possible that somebody picks a bad stave and so I know we haven't had that yet, but it, you yeah, are, we tried five and yeah. they've all been bangers. Yes. I wouldn't say they've all been bangers. I'd say they're, they're in like two or three bangers. All been banger than better than every other maker's product that we've it's tried. A, I have yeah. had one. It was in Orlando and it wasn't bad by any means. It was just really spicy, but this was in the very beginning of their store pick stuff. Right. So it's possible you get one that's a little. I, and, I, and that's what I said. I don't love and hate okay. it. I just love and there's some uncertainty there. I would agree. Yes. Because even if it's like a 10% chance, like eh, 10% chance you spend 70 bucks on something that sucks. Sure. Um, but to Ben's point, like intermediate, you're willing to start taking some risks. We're going risks, outside. Of I will rebuttal yeah. these points. Yes. Um, and then the last love, this is a love and hate. Um, I only think you need one of the wild turkey rare breed bourbon in the 1920 since we said that the wild turkey rare breed bourbon was better than the 1920 at a cheaper price so i love you having one of those two i don't love them both being in it uh for mm -hmm. that reason so i'd have just gone with one of them but i like your pack i mean i've got no problem with what you're packing there um so <laughs> brendan thoughts I <laughs> yes, talk about my packs. I'm very uh flustered by this right now. Talking about Ben's pack. How amazing my pack is. Uh so initial thoughts. I would say all four of those whiskeys are great to borderline elite value. I love all four of those. Think they're mm -hmm. all immensely good. I think I we know I like everything makers, what they do from every level. Price point is always on point to me. The seagrass I'm a huge fan of. I'm halfway through that bottle right now. I've only had it for a couple months, given my collection, how sizable it is. Not to brag. Uh, it, that tells you something. And then obviously we know I adore 1920 and Rare Breed gave it a run for its money in, in my estimation. My concern, if I'm looking at those four, is if I'm looking for someone who is moving up the ladder a little bit into mm. higher proof stuff. All of those are pretty high proof. I think if you want right. to drop in the 1920 or the rare breed and said, all right, here you go. That's your exploration into higher proof stuff. And you work on that periodically. Yes. If someone struggles with proof still, if they're still like an hundred range. I think you run the risk of that being a collection of all four being too hot for them initially. Fortunately, I will give Ben a little credit there. I think that's a good point. The barrel drinks much lighter because of the finishing. So you do have that. So it is still 118, so probably closer oof. to what, like yeah, it probably drinks like one. Let me one, let me rebuttal. Okay, okay. Yes. those points. So to TJ, number one, barrel seagrass is an excellent choice. Nothing to rebuttal there. It's clearly an amazing choice. Yes. I clearly made a great point. Uh the maker store picks. One, you uh we've had five uh store picks. They've all been better than 46 cask or regular makers cask. So I, I'm a big fan of that. We even Trade, we even put them against the FAE. We said that the store parks are better the than the FAE. FAE sucks. Right. And that's oh, their damn. annual release. That's, that's their annual release, right? Um, it also gives the opportunity to invest in a local store, start making friends, walk in there. You know, you're not going to find us like your typical Walmart or ABC. You may find an ABC pick, but, you find ABC, um, but it's not going to have their your, name. Right. Say, this is giving the opportunity to go yeah. into your local store because they'll have a maker's pick, mm -hmm. right? Um, I understand the point of not wanting to have rare breed and uh 1920 on the same list my counter to that would be 
Uh, I don't want to have a pack that doesn't include wild turkey or uh, brown foreman. These are both awesome distilleries, and I, they need to be represented, you know, in each of the packs. In response to Brendan, uh, if you guys aren't ready to drink higher proof, then just you're just a beginner pack. It's not a big deal, you know. Stay with the beginners and you know this move is, on. This is the intermediate. I'll say the Brendan. Yeah, you make some good points. Again, most of the time that Maker's Dave is going to be fine. Yeah, like you're looking at like a, maybe a ten percent, five ten percent chance that it's not good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but Brendan does have a good point. For an intermediate, you do have a lot of really really high proof stuff there, and if people aren't quite there yet. Mm -hmm. May take some may take some warming up to do. Um, I, I, I would be super stoked, super stoked if Ben dropped those four off on my doorstep and was like, "Happy birthday, Brendan!" I'd be like, "Thank you, Ben. Let's talk about yeah. your package. Come on in." And then we would drink and see what else happened. That's right. TJ, you're up next, man. What do you um, got? What do you got? So I have five bottles in my pack, mm -hmm. and I did not go over budget like Ben did, so I automatically get points for that. Um, Real quick, guys, I'm not being rude. I mean, I just interrupted TJ, so I guess I am being rude, but I'm writing, I'm putting down the calculator, like I, I'm counting up stuff when I'm looking at my phone, just so you know. Oh, Prices. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm engaged. I'm listening. I'm just doing the math. I'm not being rude either, Brendan, but Brendan, I don't care. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start with what I had that was the same as Ben. I um, went between the 19 and 1920. I said 19 and 20, like I'm Abe Lincoln talking four score and 20. And 1920. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I went back and forth between um uh Wild Turkey Rare Breed Bourbon and 1920. Could not justify putting both of them on my list. Obviously, that was a big problem I had with Ben's list. So I ended up with the Wild Turkey Rare Breed Bourbon. It won our King of the Hill and it was $15 cheaper. Seemed like the easy pick to me for that one. 45 bucks. Um Ben said that you couldn't have not have wild turkey and brown foreman in your pack. Uh, I have two brown foreman picks. Um, yeah, not the 1920, but I have two of them. One, I know this will not shock anyone on this podcast, but I have 1910, the old Forester barrel finished or a double barrel finished or toasted finish, whatever you know. There's some debate on that which way that goes. $55 for that one, 94 proof, so a little more approachable, very different from the 1920. Um, that was my second pick. The other old Forester that I included is the old Forester 100 ride that we just gave the highest rating that we've given anything that's not like somewhat allocated. Like the, uh, um, did you, did you update that on that? Yeah, you did on the big board, Brendan. Um, it's number two for us. Yeah. So 7.9, the highest was an 8.0. So for $24, I included the old Forester 100 rye. Uh, I still think that's a good old fashioned mixer. Like you still kind of need a mixer for your house. And so that was kind of my reasoning, my justification for including that one. Um, and then we got a little wild here. We wanted to go with some different things again, wild Turkey rare breed bourbon. The old forester is the, uh, 1910 that's finished the rye. You can use as a sipper that we said was really, really good or mixer. Uh, then I included the Michter's Sour Mash at forty four ninety nine, so forty five bucks. There, I have had so many people try all three of the Michter's products and say that the Sour Mash is absolutely one of their favorites that they've ever had. Um, so something very different there. But Michter's is a fantastic distillery that I really really like, and so was glad to include them. And then to finish it off, we needed a rye sipper, and I just finished off a bottle of this the other day, Whistle Pig Ten Year. It is okay. an extremely expensive rye at eighty dollars. I know there's more. Oh, it's eighty uh, for the ten. Yeah. Years? Oh there's, man. There's more higher than that, but I saved money with my rare breed. I saved money with my old Forester one hundred that we really like. I believe that puts me right at two fifty, Brendan. Two fifty mass... exactly. You did not yeah. cheat like Ben. So the well, Whistle Pig ten year is. I, I like the twelve year better because it's finished. That's like one hundred thirty dollars instead of eighty. That whistle pig tenure is my favorite uh, everyday sipper rye, right? Now, $80 is a lot for an everyday sipper. What I will say is, you know, I'm okay spending that $80 when it's allocated. And so for whistle pig 10 that you can get all the time, anytime, I love that as a as an everyday sipper. So anyway, Mixer Sour Mash, Wild Turkey Rare Breed Bourbon, Old Forester 100 Rye, 1910 from Old Forester and Whistle Pig 10, $250. Boom. All right. All right. I like it. Uh, ben, do you want to go first on your thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. Okay. So in my head, Old Forster 100 Rye, great bottle, 
on the beginner list, not on the intermediate. I think 100, I think I had the Old Forester 100 bourbon on my entry level. You did. I don't think there there should be a twenty-two dollar bottle on on an intermediate on an intermediate kind of list. Um, I I in my head when I was building my list, I almost put nineteen ten and nineteen twenty with the capability of making nineteen fifteen. I, like almost, two, did I, I almost, almost did that. I almost did that. I couldn't yeah. take up that much of my budget though. Um, so that's why I had to at least put one of them on there. We basically made the same deci- the same decision. We just Chose different things. So you're attacking me after, you know, going for the 1920. 19, 1910 is finished. 1920 is not finished. So, like, no, they're different things. I'm saying that's very close. So we're basically, they're, you know, they're not. It's they're a coin flip. Hey, Matt, though. You get to see. You get, well, yeah. I also am just not a big fan of Whistle Pig. I think their product is really, really overpriced in general, but that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have two Rise? You have two, two of them or five, two of the five are Rise, right? Yeah. He's wow. a rye. He's a rye guy. We've established that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Those are my those are my general thoughts on the uh, on the pack. No positives. I gave you some positives on yours. Oh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Some oh. positives. Um. I love whistle pig. <laughs> 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 um. I I love the old Forest one hundred rye. I just oh gosh. I, just, I love that bottle. Um. I love the rare breed because it matches my pack. You know that makes sense. Um. I also really enjoy 1910. You know, if we hang out with our packs, then we can make 1915 and it'd be great. You know, that's like, that's like the best of the both worlds, right? That's the Hannah Montana of bourbons. So I would go with, you know, that, that being better than both of us. Right. Um, sure. Brendan, your thoughts before I rebuttal Ben's idiotic thoughts. Uh, help me out here. So I had the prices. So we had Old Forester 1910. We had Old Forester 100 rye. We had Whistle Pig 10. And what else am I missing here? Rare breed bourbon. Rare breed. Yep. Make your sour mash. Mictors oh, sour Mictors. Mash. Yeah, good. Sour okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you points on that. I like Mictors a lot. It's hard for me to slot them in price-wise because mm-hmm. you're kind of like limited to only their entry-level product mm-hmm. because everything else is like so hard to find. But I definitely really enjoy Mictors. It's just a hard $45 to spend. And yeah. I almost had Mictors American uh, unblended Ooh. in mine. Yeah. But I thought flavor profile wise it was probably would have been perfect we had such a tight budget for the beginner one but i think that's like a perfect beginner one because it's so pretty and friendly yeah. and like shaved yeah. off without the harsh some of the harshness of bourbon so anyways i did not do that but i like where tj's head was at with the sour mash and that's getting people to try something a little, little different, different. Yeah, yeah yeah that's why yeah. i like that a lot uh so i actually had two of tj's on mine i don't want to jump ahead but i had two of his on mine wait, wait. Uh, are you gonna critique mine yet i'm talking about Oh, I thought you were jumping on yours. Sorry. No, 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 no. I was like, you. well, I was like, well, I need I, you to hurt I my feelings. Said, I just said I did not want to jump ahead. Oh, okay. All right. 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 Well, I'll say so. One, one that I'll get into that because I'm going to disagree with Ben here. The old Forester 100 Rye. I thought he was way too aggressive to have that. That was one of the things I penalized him for for the last one, uh, the the beginner one, yeah. it being the proof of 100 and it being a Rye. Like a lot of people in new into bourbon and whiskey in general like rye might be a little aggressive so i think like this 100 rye is perfect for intermediate to try rye see what you got going with it uh, it's got enough bourbony notes like with vanilla sweetness to it uh but it gives you some refreshing crispy rye as well uh so that i was, like that one a lot that was my rebuttal by the way so thank you for making me not have yeah. to say that yeah ben shut up uh what? <laughs> sorry <laughs> Too Drink far. more than twenty dollars <laughs> bottles. Come on, it's an intermediate pack. We got two hundred fifty bucks to spend. Well, yeah. So, so to Brendan's point, my idea was we an intermediate. I agree. You you should not have had it in your beginner pack. It was too much for your beginner pack. But you're obviously a proof for looking at your middle pack too here. Yeah, um, you got to go for the proof. So like, if, if, based on my logic, with you know having mm-hmm. lower proof stuff the first time, this is a step up. Like this one hundred mm-hmm. right. And it's still a pack that you're going to use. We're going to, you talked about this before we started, but like if you had five bourbons that you were going to have at all times in your house, like you would kind of need one like this. You would need kind of a a medium proof to be able to mix old fashions and stuff like that. So anyway, Brendan hit the nail on the head and Ben was way off. I think I'm going to just change all my entire pack to just all Basil Hayden's, uh, 80 (laughs) proof. Just give me one Basil Hayden 10 year. One basil Hayden toast, you know, and just really lean that basil Hayden low, toast. Low I'm, excited for that. I'm excited for that one. <laughs> Brendan, Brendan, please don't let Ben distract you. Continue to praise me, please. Uh, rare breed. I I like that you have one super high proof one in there. Uh, I think that's worthwhile. I'm a little skeptical. I, and mine, you're going to see that I'm not going to go that high with any of the proofs. 
Mm -hmm. uh, cause I'm trying to be courteous. I'm a very generous, uh, I'm a generous lover. I'm also a generous, uh, Somali as well. Uh, but if you're going to go with a high proof one to get people to try and tip their toe, dip their toes into, excuse me, easy for me to say, uh, the rare breed would be a really great one to, to do that with. So, uh, those are my positives with it. It's uh, good versatility there. Nice, uh, wide array of different things. Uh, the only thing I would, my biggest critique would be the whistle pig 10 being like the, uh, the $80 banger. Like, I just feel like that falls flat. You already have a rye in there. This is a lower proof rye. It, I just, for if that's where my 80 bucks is going, but then again, uh, I'm not a huge rye fan too. I like some ryes a lot. I love a few. Uh, that just, to me, it's like, it was this great $80 that you had to throw in there that you worked so yeah. carefully to get to. And that just, it's like, you know, yeah, little, it's tough to, bah, bah. Man, it's tough to find, bad. it's tough to find $80. I mean, there's not there. There are some, I tried to avoid a lot of finished things. Mm -hmm. Um, tried to avoid store picks. Um, stop coming after my pack. Don't even pull that crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tried to avoid rare breed in 1920 specifically, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I did the finish with the old Forester 1910. Man, I, Brandon, I don't know. Have you had Whistle Pig? Let me ask that. I've, I've had their six piggyback. So I'm kind of saying no to this, and I've never had Whistle Ten, Whistle Pig 10. I have it here. Should I just open oh, it yeah. now and try it right no, now? No, no, let's do that together because we all have a sample. Oh, you do have that one. No, we should do that together. I also just sent you a sample of Whistle Pig 10. I, oh. I do I do see what you guys are both saying with that being an eight dollar bottle. I think it's the <sighs> Uh, looking at my thing, I, I think it's one of the better. What is the proof on that? Is that I'm is looking, that, I'm looking. It doesn't say it on 82. Oh, it's not that. No, <laughs> hang on. I could open this. I didn't want to open it. I've had the, the I got it. I got it right here. It's super unique. It's, it a, it's 100. Years. So that's 100 proof. So that's not, oh, okay. that's not terrible. So, well, no, not terrible. And it is a super smooth, very easy drinking rye that I like a ton. Um, and I didn't really look at it as like, oh, this bottle was this much, this bottle was this much. I just liked kind of the variety for the oh, 250. Cool. Like I did, I didn't look at like, oh, whistle pick 10's 80, but like it's not as good of a value as 1910 or this, that, and the other. So mm -hmm. um yeah, no, I I I believe in whistle pig, and I, I think that after you try it, either the sample that you have there that I sent up or the sample that's the Super Bowl pick um store that pick. came in the pack. Yeah, it was, it, well, it was a Super Bowl store pick, but yes. Um, I think you'll, I think you'll lean on my side a little bit more. It's a really good, like $80 always available rye uh -oh. that I think you'll like. So Ben's pouring some Wheatley vodka. Okay. That, that's enough about me. Let's go. Brendan. Um, tell us about your, uh, pack, good boy. Tell All us right. about your pack, daddy I'm gonna boy. My, I'm going to whip out my package. Starting off. Number one, even though Ben hates it and TJ loves it. Old Forrester 100 oh, rye. Gosh. So this is going to be about what? 24 bucks or so. Yep. And to me, as someone who is still, I would consider myself intermediate rye. I think I'm advancing for beginner intermediate in the world of rye, and I love this one. I think this is a fantastic rye. The proof is really perfect for the rest of the flavor profile. Again, the vanilla, the crispiness of the rye spice, there's some in there. It's not overpowering. Very nice. As TJ said, versatile, right? You can blend it with, uh, or you can, you can put it in uh, old fashioned. You can use it as a mixer. I think it's really good for someone who's still like working their way up and proof a little bit. It's going to be perfectly fine, nice, and a good introduction into rice. And that's not too high a rye, not too challenging. So I like that. You, you really put a hurting on that bottle, put a big dent in it so far. For someone that loves it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just giving you a hard time here. Sorry. You are going to see a good chunk of these, like are pretty low down there, but I, I do really enjoy it. I just, I also know it's going to be harder to find in, in the near future, and I'm trying not to go through it too fast. Yeah. Next up, I went back and forth. So I, one that I consider was Evan Williams Bottle and Bond, which for like mm. $17 is incredible. It drinks like high 20s probably. Another one that fits that though, a little bit more money, but I wanted to get the wild turkey in there. I didn't quite go up to the rare breed like you guys did. Wild Turkey 101. Uh, this was one that I thought was a little bit too high and a little too spicy for the beginner level. So as we transition from beginner to, to intermediate, Again, another one's going to mix really well. This is going to be, what, again, like $24 or so. Uh, and we all love wild turkey. We know what it is. It gives you a different flavor profile than the old Forrester 100 because you're still getting the vanilla with this, but you also get more caramel notes, a little bit of raisin. Uh, both really, really good high quality that we have here. Next up, I'm going to go with one of my favorites, uh, one that 
I think everyone should have in their collection, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, and it opens up a world of store picks to you, even though this isn't a store pick itself. But if you like this, you're going to end up liking other store picks and being able oh, to try and experiment it. Four really Roses, single barrel. Yeah, this was one that I wanted to fit into the beginner one because I thought it'd be on the high end of with the proof at 100. Uh, but it has a lot of sweet profile because of the the um, the yeast uh, that they use and the fruity yeast, yeast strains. Uh but I think it's someone I think we can all agree we can all still enjoy this no matter where we're at. So I think it doesn't have to be a beginner, intermediate, advanced again. Everyone can enjoy it. Four Roses does such a great job, especially with this product. Uh, some of their other lower level ones, not as much. But once you get to their higher proof stuff, really, really good. And again, you can go ahead and start collecting these different uh, the OBSV is what this one is. You can start going and trying to find the different strains and, and combinations that they have for their match bills there. Which so your your cool. pick though is is just a regular four roses single barrel, not yes. the Okay. No, it, which no, is like fifty. Price. It was like fifty bucks, forty-five I have bucks. It for, I have it at forty-five because I've seen some at forty, some at fifty. I just split the middle, went forty-five. I thought that was fair. Yeah, yeah. just the regular. One. But it opens up you up if you like that one. You can go ahead and start chasing and hunting down some of these special store pick ones and start seeing what you like uh, if they're different. No. Again, yeah. and that's like forty-five dollars for a hundred proof seven, eight-year-old bourbon. Yeah, like that's that's gonna be solid for you. Next up for me, and this is gonna be about four. Is it forty or forty-five? Hang on, let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Forty dollars four zero. Uh, this is one that gets you into the entry level of barrel proof cast strength bourbons. This is Maker's Mark cast strength. It's 108 proof, but because it's a weeder and it's also versatility here, guys, it's a weeder. Nothing else in this is a weeder. Uh, it is sweet. It is savory. We talk about maple syrup pancakes with, with the Maker's Mark products. This is all of that. I was thinking similar to Ben with going with the store pick ones. I just thought this one was going to be a little bit easier to find. Uh, a little bit less money, uh, and if you like this, then all of a sudden you go ahead and say, you know what, these store picks with the different stave finishes is for me. Uh, again, that takes you from intermediate to start getting to the advanced. So uh, last one that I have, as I'm well under budget right now, I didn't want to splurge. I didn't want to go super crazy on I wanted to just be fiscally responsible. You know what I mean? I went with one of my favorites, number one on our bourbon big board right now, Smoke Wagon Small Batch, a beautiful bottle. This is a great example of what, uh, you can do from just different types of like where finishing makes a difference. This isn't finished in anything, but it is uh, it, it just shows you like you finish it in different warehouses, what an MGP bourbon can do uh, in different types of climates and whatnot, which is really cool. We love smoke wagon. It is super caramel and vanilla and just everything great about bourbon ramped up. It's a hundred proof. Again, a beautiful bottle. I'm going to say it's about $60. You can find it some places at 50. You can't find it in Florida at all. You can go online and find it at 50, uh, but you're paying probably 15, $20 for shipping. So 70, it just depends where, but I think 60 ish is fair to call it. And for me, it's one of the best value bourbons out there. So if my math is correct, TJ, I am at $192 with about what's, what's, what's 250 minus 192. Like 68 60 yeah 60 bucks all right um well, hang on i got a little bit of i got some extra money here i was fiscally responsible i say treat yourself right yeah boom 1910 just like tj there a little toasty action too so you got toasty you got two bourbons you got a rye you got a cast strength oh wait you have three bourbons very versatile so um before we tear your pack to shreds um i will say that both you and ben cheated we said that it was between four and five bourbons or whiskeys and you picked six and then ben went over budget so i'd like to crown myself the winner and i thank you guys I for coming the budget. we said it was Come four again, to five she said. <laughs> um ben do you want to go first or you want me to go first on his pack you can go first I'll listen so i like the old forester 100 rye obviously i like the old forester 110 um 1910 1910 sorry um the smoke wagon small batch is a fantastic pick i mean your your picks are really really good i i think i would like a little bit more um i don't know that the wild turkey 101 is needed as much when you have the old forester 100 i know you had extra money to kind of play around with and so it's fine that you included it because you know, you're going to just include more bourbon or whiskey if you can buy it, if that's what the budget is kind of limited at or set at. But if you have the old Forester 100 and you have the Wild Turkey 101 next to each other, like you're never drinking the Wild Turkey 101. Like the well, old Forester. I'm sorry, I have the ninth old Forester, just to avoid confusion, I have the 1910 old Forester and I have the old Forester 100 rye. 
Yeah. So the okay. so if you have the old Forester 100 Rye, mm-hmm. and it's sitting next to the Wild Turkey 101, outside of like you just trying to save the old Forester so it lasts longer, like you're mm-hmm. always going for that old Forester 100. What if you don't? That, what if someone's new into Rye and they don't like it? If they try that old Forester 100 and they're like, ah, that's not for me. I'm working into it. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's a blend between you know where ben's pack has been in ours to where mm-hmm. like you could include a 100 on the first one or you could include it here but mm-hmm. to do two on one and two on the other like i i just think it's 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 somewhat redundant i also think the old forester 100 rye is like a very approachable rye that we said it had is, a lot yeah. of vanilla and very diverse so i just again i just don't know that you need that while going on i like the four roses single barrel um i had that on my pack and had kind of an idea to go that way um there is some diversity with your um, pack with the weeded, but you had less diversity than me because you didn't have a sour mash. So you get canceled for that. Um, no, I like the four roses. I like them. I, I really don't have a problem with any of your picks um, except for having the wild turkey and the old forester together. I just think it's somewhat redundant. Um, we the get rise, rid of the wild turkey and I'd still be under budget. Yeah, which is uh, great. I just don't. I'd have to like look at, at our bottles to kind of see um, what I like, what I don't like. I wish you had a, a more of a. Um, which Ben had this, I had this with the whistle pig. He had it with the barrel seagrass. I do wish you had more of a um, like a drinker rye. Not that you can't drink Old Forester One Hundred rye, but um, I wish you had that. That's the kind of one thing I feel like is missing from yours. And there's like three drinkable bourbons, um, uh, Four Roses, the Smoke Wagon, the Old Forester 1910, where maybe you could have put a rye into into one of those slots. That's really not that bad of a critique, like right? Like you could have added a rye. The Wild Turkey 101 is kind of redundant. Other than that, I think it's a good pack. I think you did a good job. Ben? Yeah, I'll have the similar comments that, ever, that I had in TJ's pack. Like I have a fundamental issue saying that Wall Turkey 101 and uh, Old Forester 100 are intermediate and not beginner bottles. I feel like those are like the quintessential beginner bottles. And so like, like he was saying, having two of those in an intermediate pack, like, come on, I need a, I need a banger here. And I don't Mm -hmm. see any bangers. I definitely enjoy the Four Roses single barrel. Um, and if Smoke Wagon distilled or if they distributed to Florida, then I'd be like all over it. I love the Smoke Wagon small batch. Like anytime I'm out of the state and I'm looking around, like, yeah, I'll grab that bottle, but I can't find that here just on the shelf, like, period. Um, and I'll so give Brendan some credit there, though, because you can get that shipped and he was still well under budget. I don't like, I, I don't like shipping stuff. I it's know, just, but, but you I just want to go and grab it, you know. You can still get it well under budget and get it shipped. The general premise was go to your ABC or Total Wine and grab it. And I can't do that, you know. So, anyway, that's so that's point. like that's it, whatever. But I, I definitely do like the the four rows of single barrel. Um, I, I was considering the small batch select just because I, I think that bottle is great, but it's. Oh, if you haven't had that, that's the, so good. The select, mm. not the small yeah. batch. Yeah, small batch select for sixty okay. bucks. Okay, okay, okay. It, 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 like it is amazing like, the difference. Oh, uh, so good. That, the small batch. Um, but what you mentioned is like collecting recipes. You don't get that until you get into the store picks mm. at barrel strength. The, mm-hmm. the 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 single barrel is still a. Uh, they don't publish the the recipe on okay. their their whatever. But anyway, it's just getting technical. Um, but I definitely do like. I definitely do like this, the the smoke wagon. If it was available, I think that's a great bottle to have. It's arguably the prettiest bottle of all of our packs. Like it's a great looking bottle, um, and the uh, the four is a single barrel. That's a that's another good one. But I, I was looking at for my beginner pack. I was trying to slap that in, similar to how you were, and now it's just kind of available in the intermediate, which is why mm-hmm. I jumped to the the select if I could. But whatever. Smoke wagon small batch is, you know, when you look at everyone's banger right whatever that is um brendan's is different being that smoke wagon small match but that that is kind of a banger you know i don't know it's really good i I almost went with when i was under budget still i almost said i'm going to upgrade small batch with uncut unfiltered now that's harder to find even online at price and like at 80 bucks but like i pay i got online for 85 dollars with shipping included i think um 
she can. It's just it was higher proof. I didn't know whether to quite go up that high in the proof game. Uh, but that would have been that would have been a um, that would have been a banger for sure on cotton filtered. Okay, so uh, any thoughts? I'll let you answer to our critiques. My only real critique was not having a rye in there that's a drinker, and then yeah. the one hundred and one and the one hundred. Any thoughts around that? Uh, if not, he, we can vote. <laughs> yeah, no, just real, real, real quick. The uh, I, I think I applied. I tried to not apply my own sensibilities and go stuff that's going to be more trying to like think of someone in the intermediate range, but definitely with my sensibilities of not loving rye, I think other people are still getting into rye more. I am starting to enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, probably need to give people more credit that, that a lot of people like are going with rye and bourbon, like similar step for step and weren't like at bourbon here and rye like that for me. Um, yeah. So that would probably be that. So yeah, that, that is probably, that, that is a fair critique. Uh, and then at the proof ones, Ben, I, I think, or with the 101 and, and that, like whether the 101 and the old force or 100 rye, are beginner intermediate i think agree to disagree on like because that was uh, something i docked you for on the beginner pack uh that years were too high uh but it's very clear that you're very into the proof as something that's valued to you and again i'm trying to be genuine and, and, and sensitive and and caring and gentle to someone who's an intermediate. Much. I think it's brave that you've done that. Yeah, um, thanks. No, thanks for I being so brave that, with going for you know eighty I, proof. So I think it's very important uh, to be brave. I think the uh, I, I'll split the middle, right? Like I'll be the kind of the try to be the peacemaker here. I think that a, a one hundred could fit into either pack, but you just I don't think you can have a um, twenty dollar. I don't think you can have a beginner intermediate pack. Yeah, I don't think thir thirty dollars or at least a thirty dollars, no, forty dollars and above. Not forty dollars no. intermediate. I, I think the one hundred and one is more fair. I think the old force. I think this is certain. That's a bang. Close. That's a banger for twenty four bucks. It is a banger for twenty four dollars. It's a banger, beginner banger, right? No, I think oh, I think. Oh come I, on! I think one hundred could fall somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. And so it, it would be fine to have a one hundred on a beginner. It would be fine to have a one hundred on an intermediate. I think where you're both wrong is by having two of each of those. Ben had a couple 100s on his beginner. You had a couple 100s on your intermediate. I think you'd only need one of those on either ones because it's too much for a beginner. It's it's not enough for a, an intermediate. So anyway, that's my thought on that. Um, okay. For All those right. low price things, you know, land somewhere in the middle on that stuff. Let's uh, vote. Let's vote. Yeah. Let's vote. Um, Let's go first. to TJ first. Uh, I'll vote first. I don't, okay. Let's go to TJ first. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know uh, yet. You don't trust him. <laughs> ah, I was like, I'm going to read this thing. <laughs> what if we write it all down? No, what does say? I, 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 oh, I, we I, can write I, it down. I, uh, no, I know, I know I what care. mine is. I know what I'm um, doing. I, I don't know mine yet. I think I know what mine is. Yeah. Let me. I will write mine down and then just so I can't change it. Oh, I really don't good. know. If you've got yours written down, Ben, then you go first because I'm really not sure yet. I, what? I, I, no, I, I want to. Oh my God. I'll say it for both of you guys. This is ridiculous. You ready? No, oh, I didn't. Oh, I think okay. you're actually going to let me go. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, I mean, shoot. Shoot I, your I, still, hand. I right. think you guys both have a lot of pros and cons to yeah. your. To your pack. Yeah, like, oh, I'm not... Thanks. I think you guys both have a lot of sh shitty uh, parts of your pack. Dang. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, so I'll go with. Write it, gotta write it down. I'm going with Brendan, and I don't Ooh. mean to. I'm, I, and I'll give you my reasoning. I it was really close, like, this is like a game seven of the finals. I think game my critique, my critique for Ben's, my biggest critique for him was that the old Forester 1920 and the wild turkey rare breed were somewhat redundant. Um, and I didn't, I didn't like that. And so, if I was to eliminate one of those from Ben's pack, he would only have three left, and so. Even if I eliminated the, if I eliminated the the one issue that I had with Brendan's, we still got like five really good bourbons there. And so, Ben's, though there weren't many flaws with either of your packs, like I, you know, you you guys do, both did a really good job for what you did. Like Ben's flaw was was somewhat fatal because it essentially made like one of his bourbons kind of redundant. He also went over budget at two fifty five. So I'm I'm going with Brendan here, and I swear if Brendan wins this thing again, I'm going to be pissed. Um, uh, Brendan, you go next since you can't vote for us, and then Ben will be the decider. All right, I, I am the decider. I feel well, bad because this is oh god, this is exactly the same rationale I had for the last one. I went with TJ. Yeah. What? 
<laughs> Wrong this, answer. No, this is going to be the exact same reason as last time. I think TJ's was more versatile and hit the intermediate bourbon whiskey drinker more. And so by following the prompt, like he wins and he wasn't over budget, Ben. However, I would much rather have Ben's package. I'm when, say it. when are you going to des- decide that our listeners are men enough to drink high proof bottles? Because it's Guys not for like, our listeners. Oh, We're not man. Doing strictly for our I listeners. don't know if our listeners are okay with drinking anything over 90 proof. I mean, you know, Joe, Joe their likes are too into delicate. maple syrup ones. So I don't know. Uh, but I. If, ben, I, if the vote was who used their 255 the best five, or the best Ben would have won it but that wasn't the prompt that was the whole prompt it was for intermediates the it was half the prompt you got half the prompt correct he's he's missed the he's he's not understood the assignment twice twice now. and both so maybe, times they've been his assignment when are you gonna where are you gonna understand the assignment for me because that's how it goes <laughs> you have the most is, money we're gonna spend it and they were like the best pack this is the best pack every time no um yeah, Ben just makes up the assignment himself. <laughs> he, you know, he makes up the assignment and doesn't follow it. You guys bourbon. assume that like we have like you know a bunch of three year olds you know signing on for our bourbon. It was packs. intermediate though, is what we're calling it, right? Jeez, it was. Uh, the next one though will be advanced, and Ben will probably cr- we'll I'm probably get stealing, both votes. I'm just there. stealing Ben's four because that's a great foursome for Jeez. that prize. Um, yeah, Ben, decide this thing. The winner. Ben's got zero votes the entire time because I, <laughs> I had the best packs but, but every packs time. But his packs have been the best both times, but he's not every following the rules. Time he's yeah. like the idiot who doesn't sign his name on the SAT. The winner, <laughs> the winner for this pack because they chose adulthood and not two twenty dollar yes! bottles. Yes, is TJ. <laughs> Spend your Dang, money feel, and buy I, decent I, bottles. I feel bad for you, Ben. I, I'd have voted for you, but I thought Brandon was going to vote for you too, so I just didn't want to get shut out. So I, I, I revoke my vote and uh, give it to Ben. Yeah. Um, well, guys, That's I would weird. like to I take some time. Backs, whatever. I would like to take some time and pat myself on the back, but I won't do that tonight. I'll let you guys do it. Tell me how great I am. <laughs> ben, make sure you uh, some of that wilderness try for the next part of the oh show. Oh, my goodness. That. He's already down like an entire bottle. All right. <laughs> on to, hey, so that was fun. We have another possible similar um, list for you guys next week. I'm not sure. Not sure if we're doing that or not, but we've, we've floated the idea. We've talked about it. We'll see. Stay tuned. Um, I feel bad. No, no. I didn't get any votes, and now he's have TJ's name all over his hand. Hey, you want my yeah. phone number too, Ben? It's going to be later tonight. Yeah, the worst. <laughs> Um, all right, let's move into our next segment. King of the Hill Rye. Mm. Nobody, I almost put the wild turkey rare breed rye on my list. I just couldn't make it work. With yeah, the budget it, for it's, for fifteen dollars less, like the bourbon. Is, yeah, and that's and I good. and so saying that I did put an eighty dollar whistle pig on there, but I do think the whistle pig. <laughs> what is the rare breed rye's proof? One hundred twelve. 112. So there's a hundred. It's a, the whistle pig's a hundred, and the, the extra couple of years really do make it really, really smooth. And so yeah. I know you hate whistle pig just because of the it's it's priced high, which it is probably yeah. a little overpriced, but man, it's really good stuff. Um, rare breed rye is going up against wilderness trail rye. Ben, I'll make mm-hmm. you full screen real quick for those watching. Yes. Talk to us about wilderness trail rye from gas bar. Gas bars. Gas so bars. wilderness trail. Uh, this comes in at 107 proof, so I'm not sure if you guys uh, at an intermediate or beginner level will be able to drink this or not. <laughs> Come um, on, God. But if you're in the area, Gas Bars, Tibble Terrace, has this uh, as a store pick, um, and they have, I think, 211 bottles total. Mine is bottle number 46. So 107 proof. The mash bill is 56% rye, 33% corn, and fifth or 11%. Malted barley. Let's jump into it, guys. What are you getting on the nose as we get started? Anybody want to go first? Brendan, Ben? Yes, I'll go. Spearmint minty bomb on the nose. It is so minted. Minted, almost like an Andes. If you're Do you know which one? Or are you just saying one of the two? Oh. <laughs> Once I again, do. Ben, not following the prompt. Yeah. 
We're we're doing so this as the, King of the Hill, where you put these up. One of them. One Please of tell them. Tell me you have the rare breed poured and you're comparing. One of them. <laughs> oh I don't know gosh. which, but one of them is like you ever been to like Olive Garden? Those Andy's mints. It's like minty and then chocolatey. That's one of them. I don't know how you guys aren't keeping up. With oh, me. he has the other one. Oh, thank God. <laughs> the other one, vanilla. Mm -hmm. A lot of vanilla, not as minty, not as chocolatey. Whew. Yeah, that mint on that one will light you up. I, I will say, so mint the one, fiesta. the one in my right hand, a ton. Like, I, if I gave the not like in a good bad way, but like if I gave it a like amount of a nose, it's like a ten out of ten. The other one is more muted. Not, you know, one has a great nose. One is just kind of average to me. Yeah. I said there's a very, one has a very profound, distinct. Stark. Sharp. Stark. Tony. Stark. Stark. Ned. Ned. Oh, damn. Uh, Rob. Stark. Uh, Rob. Rob. Ar Ar Rob I Stark. Rob. Rob. I, just, I just said Rob. Rob Starks. I don't know who any of these people are other than Tony. John, John Starks. Is that another sports thing? He played basketball for the Knicks. Yeah. He, oh, I have no idea who these people are. In the in the early 90s. How would you not know that? He did. Yeah. So I like the nose on the one in the Southwest Florida Bourbon Society glass much better than the bourbon on a budget glass. Which mm. there. I yeah, there's a clear – the ones in my right hand is a clear winner on the nose. I'll really? So I'm struggling getting a huge difference. Like one spicier, spicier, mintier, more berry. So the spicier or mintier. So I, I am a true American. And so like sure. everything's, <laughs> everything's bigger and bolder and more in your face and more pungent. You're a true Texan. Yeah, whatever. Whatever yeah. you want to call that. But I live in Florida. I, yeah. One of these is the one that hits me and smacks me in the mouth. That's the one that is better to me. That's a Floridian. Yeah. Do we want to taste these? or? I'm sorry. I can't get over this. Ben, what would you rather have? A nice Maker's Mark cast strength, a smoke wagon, small batch. <laughs> Brendan is so butthurt about four this. four roses, single barrel. Uh-huh. Or a rare breed. Yeah. Which is great. Mm -hmm. A whistle pig. That does suck. I, I'm bad about the whistle pig. What was the other one that we didn't have? That Our before? fans are going to like you guys. And then a Michter's Sour Mash. Like I that. really I really like Michter's like so much that that has weight, even though it's their base product. I really enjoyed Michter's. I, I call shenanigans on this, but that's fine. I have three Michter's bottles right here sitting next to me. One of those. Barrel, you have any of the Sour Mashes? No. Barrel Strength Rye. Toasted Barrel Strength Rye. I have two. Ten-year rye. Like, ready to go. But anyway, those are not available. My guy Tony in Virginia loves the sour mash, so he's gonna light you guys up for crapping on it tomorrow. Okay. I'm not crapping on it. That's why I gave you the point. He had to make no, no, Brendan. Sorry, gonna give. It to okay, Brendan good. Yeah. Just saying. Okay, what about the taste on these two? Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, that one. That's earthy. That mm -hmm. one. Mm, that's earthy. So the one that I like the nose on a lot. Exactly. It's really floral. Very earthy, very floral. I'm thinking that's the Wilderness Trail just because I ha I'm trying not to look at the color too much because I, I think if I look at the glasses hard, I'll be able to tell. Like last week, I immediately could tell which one was the, the Wild Turkey Rare Breed. The one that I loved the nose on, very, very earthy, very floral. Yeah. Let's try the other one. Brendan, do you have any thoughts while we're going? No. I'm telling you, TJ is, is right here. The The first one, which I think could be Wilderness Trail, is super earthy, very floral, has a lot of like characteristics of like in the, in the Four Roses kind of realm. The other one is like a ton vanilla, like vanilla, 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 um, with it being a little more muted on the, uh, on the nose. Palette mm -hmm. is heavy, heavy vanilla. Heavy vanilla, good amount of spice. Um, These both being rye, I would expect more mint in yeah. the other one, but like I'm just not getting that mint that comes through. It could just be like, a comparison. One of these I was getting mint in the flavor, and the other one not more vanilla. And I don't know. I'm not as good as this as, as you guys are with the rye. Like I have a harder time getting like deep into it. That's what she said. I don't love the finish. The one that I love the nose, the the stark minty 
spicy nose. I don't love the finish on that at all. I know that we're jumping past taste. The finish kind of the floral, you know how like some, some, um, some red wines kind of have that earthy, like mushroomy taste. Like that's kind of how this finishes to me. And it's like, it's just not, it's just not as pleasant as I would like. I don't know. It's weird. It's very the other one finished with vanilla. Like, uh, you know, if it, it, it finished similar to the taste of the other one, Correct. that'd be really cool. Oh yeah. Cause the nose. Yeah. It'd be super complex. Um, I don't know where I'm even at on these. I, I mean, I think this is the rare breed, but either way, I mean, this, to me, it's more about like I weight taste heavily, just like we do in our in our mm -hmm. in our averages, right? Like at the end of the on Thursdays, right? But I don't know, Brendan. Do you have a pick yet or no? Uh, yeah, I think so. So in my right hand is the one I was getting a little bit more vanilla and a little bit more chocolatey, desserty. Where the other one uh, was more the minty and raspberry and kind of like fruitiness on the nose, and then. Once you mentioned TJ, the finish and one of those having more of an earthy kind of finish. And I tried to that distinguish which one was which for me. I was able to tell which one had more proof, which one had a sweeter finish. Uh, and the one I was familiar with, which is the one in my right hand, which is the one I like a little bit more. Uh, and I'm going to go with the one in my right hand whenever we do go with it. I don't want to look at the bottom what it is yet, but I, I have a feeling that it, this is rare breed in my right hand. Yeah, I'll wait. But the my, my right hand was... Uh... The one that I love the nose more. I like everything else about the other one. So the nose on my right hand was great. Everything else about the other one was better. So I'm going with my left hand. Ben, do you have your pick yet or do you know? I think that's very similar to me. I think the nose on the one on my left hand, which could be different than yours, uh, is way better than the nose on the the other one. But taste and finish is, is definitely with the... Uh, the one on my right. The, the left-handed one to me, uh, the one I'm thinking is Wilderness Trail, again, could be wrong here, craftier. Like what, what you think of, at least when I think of a, a craft bourbon, you get more of the graininess in mm -hmm. it and, and kind See of that? more, almost more like a farm in some ways, if that makes sense. Yeah. Just more pure and unfiltered. That's what I think the Wilderness Trail one is, uh, if I had to guess, based on, on what you guys were describing the flavor profiles as, what I'm getting. All right, let's reveal it. Uh, so this is my pick. I'll hold it up to the camera and try not to spill it. Yeah, RB, rare breed. So All right. that was it. I Pretty, not super tough to tell. I did think we were in for a battle on mine when I was smelling the Wilderness Trail, but uh, flavor just couldn't couldn't hold up. Um, ben, is, is that the same for you? You know, I really enjoy this uh, Wilderness Trail, but I, I think it loses it in comparison to the rare breed on the palate, I think it's a great bottle, you know, on its own um, store pick, but I think it does lose it here. Um, and so I'm going with the rare breed. Brendan sweep. Uh, uh, yes. That's a, that's what I looked. A is rare breed for me. That is a sweep. Uh, the finish and the flavor is what ended up distinguishing it for me as well. Do you know what time it is though? Game time. No. Do you know, you know mix mix time. No, nah, I'm not Mi doing it. Mixtures. The rare breed is way too good for that. So, okay, what are we putting up against rare breed next week? Next week. Yeah, so this is rare breed has won three now. It is about to advance to the fourth round, which is was that as far as 1920 got? Did they get to I thought the it was two? No, no 1920 got, got through three. It got through um old forester 100, it got through 1910, and it got through maker's cask strength. It lost in round four to rare breed bourbon. Which um, rare breed is what somehow really good beat me in the one we just did? Yeah, yeah. yeah not, so not shocking. That I'm hurt over it. What? So, um, I'd like to talk with you, losers, about what we're going for next week. I'm just next happy week, I've gotten a vote once during this. Yeah, screw you guys. My so, facts the best. Brendan and I have three votes each, and Ben has zero. Uh, is the real way to look at that. Um, Next week, this is going to have to beat out. This is going to be – I'm already scared for Rare Breed Rye because this is going to have to beat out an absolute banger. We're going with Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. Gosh. Um, I don't I don't know if I, – I, I'm sorry, Mr. Russell. Um, this is going to be a tough week for you. Um, but it should be fun. We'll see how it kind of all shakes out and where it goes. Hey, we've been on for a little over an hour, I think, or maybe just approaching that. Um, so let's go to real quick pursuits and purchases 
and then we will get out of here. Ben, do you have any pursuits or purchases? Yes. So yesterday I walked into my local Costco and guess what was sitting there all perched up that on big, the, uh, that big on dragon, the shelf. That big dragon. Um. No, it wasn't a freaking <laughs> brandy dragon. No, get that crap out of here. It was a bottle of Eagle Rare 10 year baby Buffalo Trace. $25, $24.99. So had to grab it. Also, right. I sent the uh, the signal out to everyone in my little local friend group. Hey, Costco's got $24.99 Eagle Rare. Everyone ran up there. It was great. So that's what I grabbed this week. Was it limit one? Yeah, it was limit one. Yeah, definitely. It used to not be like a year ago when it been limit one. It was not that at all. It was definitely limit one. They were writing your membership number down, writing your name down. Yeah, it was it was big time. Ben was trying to go get me, was trying to get me to go get some. And okay, so Brendan. TJ. You live on the north side of Tally, right? By like, oh, like by Richard. So if this was at the how long it takes you to get to the airport? 25 minutes? If this was a $25 bottle of Eagle Rare at the airport, would you have gone and gotten it or no? If if you were at home. At I 10. wasn't trying to get you. I was just, I'm just notifying you of. Just asking Brendan a question. Yeah, $25. I'm a sucker for a good deal. Oh. I wouldn't have so, done it for $30 if it was what it normally you find it for. I saw Eagle Rare, by the way, on my journey this uh, past weekend. Ninety dollars. I saw. Oh, it that's brutal. Did it come with a bottle yeah, of? Don't say. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> oh my lord! We'll get into that in another episode. Um, I told Ben it was going to be an hour round trip. Twenty five minutes there, twenty five minutes back, ten minutes that's, in the store. You know, I you know, I just could not just. I just found one for thirty two the other day. You know, mm-hmm. at a much closer store that I bought and gave away as a gift. So for the seven but like I just. If it had been 10 minutes, like Ben is five minutes from Costco. So it is a 15 minute round trip for him from like yep. walking out the door to like getting back. So for me, I don't know, an hour round trip to save five bucks or something that I have three TJ bottles of in my house right money. now. You know, he just, he's like, ah, you know, I'd rather pay the 90. Mm-hmm. Leave Good, my point. House. Good point. Um, so yeah, I, I couldn't do it, but Brendan, I'm glad that you would go do it. That's a long way, bro. It's just, traffic. but like, just to be like, I got it for $25. Exactly. I got it in my bag. 25 bones. Yeah. I, I just don't care that much. People I have three of them in my house right now. And like, yeah. yeah. All right, ben, uh, Brendan, you got any pursuits or purchases? Anything you're pursuing? Anything you picked up last week? Honestly? Nope. I'm all good right now. Good. Didn't want to hear from you anyway. Right. Take your $25 and buy yourself a vote. Oh, wait. That's Ben. Um, I got, and I don't have the bottle here, but uh, friend of the show. I don't know if he listens. He probably doesn't even listen. But friend of the show, Elliot, that was on a few weeks ago, our wild turkey connoisseur, um, yes. sent me us. Sent Kara and I us. A, <laughs> sent <laughs> this whole um, TJ winning thing is, was a terrible idea. Ben, you yeah, created yeah. a monster. Sent us. And by TJ us, and I mean ben, me yes. and my, my myself, and myself, myself, TJ, TJ Pinger, Pinger <laughs> Nick Cock, and myself <laughs> sent us an Elijah Craig barrel proof from 2015. Um, I, I had gotten him, uh, Ben and I had gotten him something. I'll give you some credit. Ben. Me, we had Ben and I shipped him, or I shipped him, I, a acquired. Bottle, <laughs> I shipped him a bottle of bourbon um, that he had been looking for, and he sent that back as a thank you. And uh, I'm excited to get off a whole 30 so that Ben and I can try that. So anyway, thank you, Elliot. Shout out to the man. Um, any other shout outs before we go? Joe, shout out, you, Joe. Yeah. Joe, you're shout the best. I love shout- everything you send in. Except for the decadence. Because now listen to what so. TJ says. <laughs> Ben's the worst. Brendan's mediocre. And I'm the champion for all time. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us. Check out Thursday's episode where we review... Weller Special Reserve. Ooh, my favorite. Pappy Jr. Pappy the fifth, maybe. The poor maybe. man's poorest of pappies. <laughs> it's like it's like in Game of Thrones. You know how like there's all the like Lannister like cousins that no one really cares about. Mm-hmm. It's Uncle. It's Uncle Kevin, basically, yeah. of the Weller Pappy line. Gotcha. Uncle Kev. Like, Twenty people got that reference. 
We watched Game of Thrones. Oh, Ben did. Ben did it. Yeah. What but is the throne of games? So Ben doesn't like sports. He doesn't like Game of Thrones. Ben you're loves dead. the Olympics and he loves judging people. Um, he's a brave soul. All right. 7.5. For, for TJ, Ben, and Brendan, this is Bourbon on a Budget. We'll see you guys next week. Cheers. Cheers. And myself.